To get started, I'd like to welcome Mark Zuckerberg. How are we doing this morning? So before we get started, I just want to say how, how meaningful it is that you are all here with us today. You know, I'm, I'm looking around, and I see a lot of people that we've worked with for a long time. Uh, I see a lot of people who are in virtual reality right now. And, uh, and, and I see a lot of people who have been in the industry for a really long time uh, making this happen. And you know, you're all the reason why virtual reality has gotten to the point it's at today. So thank you so much, and thank you for being with us today. Now, we all share this big goal together. We're here to make virtual reality the next major computing platform. And at Facebook, this is something that we're really committed to. You know, I'm an engineer, and I think a key part of the engineering mindset is this hope and this belief that you can take any system that's out there and make it much, much better than it is today. Or it's anything, whether it's hardware, or software, a company, a developer ecosystem. You can take anything and make it much, much better. And as I look out today, I see a lot of people who share this engineering mindset. And we all know where we want to improve and where we want virtual reality to eventually get. Right? It's this feeling of real presence, like you're really there with another person uh, or in another place. We want hardware that's a uh, lighter form factor and smaller that can do both VR and AR, that could do eye tracking and mouth tracking and hand tracking and so much more. Uh, we want software that can let us experience anything, uh, that can help us learn anything with new kinds of education content, and can let us do things that it wouldn't be so easy to do uh, today, like floating through space and uh, without gravity. Now, I, I want to start today by talking about where we are today as an industry, uh, taking stock of, of the progress that we've made. So, our industry has made more progress in the last couple of years than I think any of us could have really hoped for. Right? When we bought Oculus a couple years back and planted a flag in the ground that we thought that, that virtual reality was going to be the next major computing platform, at that point, no one had ever shipped a modern consumer virtual reality product. Uh, no one had ever seen touch or hand presence. And at that point, certainly, no one would have guessed that just now, two years later, there would be more than a million people actively using virtual reality products. So now, following this, uh, this development that this whole community has brought, uh, we have a lot more folks investing in virtual reality. Not just in this community, but we have Samsung investing in virtual reality. We have Valve and HTC investing in virtual reality. Now we have Google and others. So this is really happening. And we have a lot to be excited about. Now, the first step for getting virtual reality out into the world is, is getting the basic hardware out there. And, and this is happening, right? And it's happening, I think, at a faster rate than uh, any of us had really expected. And you know, we, we had a little bit of a slow start earlier this year on Rift, but now that's rolling out quickly. And we're going to get touch in your hands by the end of this year, too. So we're excited about that. Now, we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about these products and talking about hardware, because there's a lot more innovation in hardware to go to get to that ultimate experience that we all want. But it's also true that with the hardware we have today, it's already possible to build some pretty amazing experiences. So what I want to focus on today here is what I think we need to do in the next phase of developing virtual reality which is building great software experiences. Now, I, I want to tell you a fun story quickly before we get into this. Uh, one of the fun parts of my job is that whenever a president or a prime minister from another country comes to the US, they often want to come to Facebook to see what new technology we're working on. And that means that I get to be the first person who's ever showed them virtual reality. And you know, they usually don't have much time because, you know, they're running a whole country. But uh, so I get to show them a few things. Uh, you know, I normally take them into toy box. We play some ping pong in, in zero gravity. Uh, we'll make a sculpture in medium. I'll show them a 360 video. And you know, depending on what kind of a leader it is and what their culture is, maybe we'll play a first person shooter too. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And to the person, by the time the demo is done and we take the headset off, they're just amazed, right? And they don't want to leave. And so I actually had this one situation where the wife of a prime minister was yelling at her husband that he had to leave, go catch the plane to go home, uh, and he was just sitting there like, I was told there was a dinosaur. I demand to see the dinosaur. Here's the dinosaur. <laughs> so, you know, the magic of VR software is this feeling of presence, right? The feeling that you're really there with another person or in another place. And helping this community build this software and these experiences is the single thing that I am most excited about when it comes to virtual reality. Because, you know, this is what we do at Facebook, right? We build software and we build platforms that billions of people use to connect with the people and things that they care about. Now, when I was in college getting started thinking about all this, I actually studied both computer science and psychology. Now, I, I wasn't there for very long, but uh, <laughs> early on in psychology, you, you do learn uh, that the brain is specifically wired uh, to care about people first, right? That's why uh, we have all these centers of the brain that are just about processing and understanding people, you know, whether that's uh, understanding faces or language or emotions or relationships. Uh, that's why babies can stare at faces for, you know, what seems like an unlimited amount of time, because there's so much there to take in and learn about. That's why, you know, if something moves on that side of the room, uh, you may not notice it, but if you're talking to someone and they move their eyebrow one millimeter, uh, you're going to notice that, right? Because that means that they're conveying a different emotion, and that's a really important signal for you to pick up, right? So think about this for a second. Um, you know, look around the room, right? What we're wired to see, uh, no one looked around the room when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> So let's try that one again. Look around the room. Um, you know, what we're wired to see is, isn't the chairs or the walls, right? It's, it's the people who are, who are here, right? Um, that's, that's how our brains work, and that's why I've spent my life trying to build technology that puts people at the center of the experience. Now, when I was first getting started thinking about Facebook, I, I looked around at the internet, it was 2004, and I realized that you could find almost any type of content that you wanted on the internet. Games, news, music, movies, uh, reference materials, almost anything. Except for the one thing that we all care the most about, which is what's going on with uh, the people that we care about around us. So, uh, so I built that, and um, <laughs> it's going pretty well so far. <laughs> there, there are about 1.7 billion people using Facebook today, and you know I think that that just underlies this point that you know, we really want our software to, to be built with people at the center of it. You know, and in fact, today, when you look at the top mobile apps, four of the top six of the mobile apps are, are our social apps that are about communication and putting people at the center. So you know, we all have this deep desire to understand what is going on with the people around us and uh, to be understood ourselves. Now, as much progress as we have made at, at putting people first in technology, one of the things that I still think is crazy is we're here in 2016, and our mobile phones, or the primary computing platform of today, are still organized around apps and not people. Right? I mean, you pull up your phone and you see a grid of apps. And you know, that is not really how we're, we process the world. Right? It's not really how we think. And I don't think that that's how uh, the next platform is going to work. So, you know, think about this for a second. Uh, you know, think about an everyday experience that you have, right? Like going out to dinner with your friends, right? If, if that were organized in the way that we organize our phones today, right around where every task or every part of that experience is uh, in a completely different place, so you have to do something different to get there, then, you know, first you'd, you'd start off, you'd be in a room eating by yourself probably, and then, you know, if you wanted to talk to your friends, you'd have to stop eating and get up and go to a different place. Uh, and if you wanted to take a photo with your friends, you'd all have to get up and walk to a different room together. So, you know, that's not how we live, right? That's not how we process the world, and, you know, that isn't going to be how virtual reality works. So virtual reality is the perfect platform to put people first because of presence, right? Because you feel like you're really there 
in another place with people, right? You have the space where you can do anything you want, right? You can play a game, uh, you can do work, but more importantly, you are free to explore and you're probably gonna end up doing a lot more things together than you would if every experience was its own app that you had to go into separately. Now, people first doesn't mean that every experience is gonna be social, because it's not, most aren't. But what it does mean is that we should build software and, and experiences that follow the way that we, that, that our minds work and the way that we process the world, right? So that means that you know, every task that we're doing should be part of a, a broader experience. Now, I think that building this software platform and a lot of these experiences is a big part of the next phase of developing virtual reality and bringing it out into the world. But rather than just talk about it, I figured that we should show you what we're building. So let's go do that. All right, first live demo in VR. All right. We are in virtual reality right here at Oculus Connect. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Hey Mark, it's great to see you. Hey yeah. Mark. You guys too, you know your avatars look a lot better than the last time that you showed me. <laughs> yeah, we actually have faces now and bodies and uh, we even look like ourselves. Yeah, you know, even though you're cartoons, it's pretty amazing that our minds can just automatically understand the facial expression so I can understand what you're feeling right now. Right. So we can actually make eye contact. Uh, our mouths move when we talk so we know who's speaking in the room. Uh, I can even make expressions. I can smile. <laughs> I can look surprised. Oh. <laughs> I can look confused. Uh, You're making those can, sound effects right now. <laughs> that's, that's me. I can even laugh if you say something funny. Here, take a look at your own avatar. Whoa, why, why, why did you make me look like a young version of Justin Timberlake? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh... Uh, the over-the-top laugh is not part of the avatar system. <laughs> all right. No, that, that's all me. Yeah. All right, so, so now that we're here, you know, the point of, of, of uh, being here is to talk about building a software platform that puts people first, right? So if, you know, if we were using a phone, we would have to pick what app or what task we wanted to do and go to that. But because we're in virtual reality, we're here together, and we have the space where we can just do whatever we want, right? So do you want to go somewhere? Yeah, let's. In fact... How about I take us to the bottom of the ocean? Sounds Beach. good. All right. Whoa. <laughs> sharks. Oh. <laughs> Those are sharks. All right. That's a lot of sharks. Oh <laughs> All right. How about we go somewhere else? How about we go to another planet, say Mars? Wait a second. Mike, didn't he say that was going to cost billions and uh, we'd all probably die? Mm, not in VR. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome hmm. to Mars. Well, hmm, I don't think I'd want to live here. <laughs> All right, guys, how about we go somewhere where there's some more people? You know, that's kind of my thing. Um, what about Facebook offices? That's great idea. Great. All okay. right. Okay. All right, here we are, back. Uh, back oh, on Earth. Much. All right, so oh, here yeah, we are. This is, this is my, my office in the, in the, um, at Facebook. So, right All right, so, you know, the point of this and the reason why we're here is to talk about how, you know, we have this space together in VR, and how we can go do anything that we want together, right? So, you wanna play a game? Oh, that sounds sure. great. Let's try, uh, let's try a quick game of cards, huh? There we go, okay. two for you, two for you, and All right, what do we plan? Me. Let's just do a quick game of high card, ready? Flip them over on three. One, two, three. Oh, 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 I win. There. Let's see. Oh! I, oh, man. I, uh, nice. I barely ever won in demo practice, so, you know, I'm... We didn't plan that at all. <laughs> well, another game we can play might be chess. Now, I'll go first. Queen to center a board. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in virtual reality, you can make any move you want, apparently, but, all right. How about oh, here you go. Completely different? You know, um, when I was in school, I actually used to fence. 
Oh. You got another one of these? Uh, I can do one better. Check this out. I will just make my own. <laughs> draw this really quick. Like this. Oh, draw like so. I'm going to go like that. All right. I'm good. Ha ha. Swish, swish. Clang, clang. Ha ha. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look what I've got, guys. I think you win. All right, we, we surrender. We surrender. <laughs> oh, another thing we can do together would be just watch a simple video. Now, unlike on the phone, I can zoom this up to any size we'd like. Whoa. Check it there out. Somewhat like our own private movie theater. <laughs> It's quite the, quite the falcon you've got there. All right. Hey, so I promised Priscilla that I would go home to check on our dog, Beast. You want to come with me? Sure. All right. Yeah. Let's go do it. Sounds great. All right. Here we are. Check we were out. at my home, and, um, and there's Beast. Oh, there's Beast. Oh, he's yeah. adorable. He looks well, so happy. That's I great. I mean, he's got his ball. It's all good. Hey, I'm getting a call in Facebook Messenger. Dude, you can actually answer that call in VR. Take a look at your wrist. Whoa. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good. Why do you look like Justin Timberlake? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, how's Beast doing? Uh, he's great. Here, take a look. Um, he's just hanging out with his ball. Uh, he's doing well. But this is crazy. You know, you are dialed into virtual reality right now. And Beast has no idea what's going on. <laughs> he usually doesn't. Yeah, hey, do you mind if I, if I just put you here for a second? Sure, I'm in clinic, but my next patient's not here yet, so I have a minute. All right, cool, we'll hang out in virtual reality in between you treating real patients. All right, so, um, <laughs> hey, while we're here, do you want to, um, you want to take a, a quick uh, modern family selfie? Oh, I have just a tool for that. There you go. Oh, of course you have a selfie stick. <laughs> of course. All right, let's uh, do this. Oh, I've got to get the angle right. All right. All right, here, let's check out these photos. All right, which one, which one do you like? You know, we, we, get, we got to put one of these on Facebook. What do you think? Uh, right one? Let's do the right side, the one on the right. You know, I think this one might even be better. No, let's, all right, all right, let's stick with this. All right, Facebook. Bam. There you go. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right. So, you know, this has been a great example, I think, of the type of experiences you can have when we're here together and we have this space and we can do anything we want. So, nice job pulling this together, guys. It's amazing how much progress we've made. Hey, Thank thanks. you very much. All right. I should probably get back to the keynote, but I'll see you guys a bit later. See ya. All All right. Right. See ya, Priscilla. All right. Take it easy. All right. All right, everyone, give it up for Mike and Lucy. So that's what an environment looks like where you have people first, and you can bring in any kind of experience that you want. Now, you know, not every experience in virtual reality is going to be social. As a matter of fact, most aren't. And we're really committed to helping this community build all kinds of different experiences. So that's why today I am proud to announce that we have already invested more than $250 million into this community to fund the development of all kinds of content, from games to media and more. So um, we're very proud of that. And we are excited to announce that we are committing another $250 million to fund even more content development from folks in this community. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. We're, we're really excited to, to support this. Now, we're also excited about supporting content beyond games. Right? One area that I'm personally really excited about is education. Right? And I think that education is going to be a really powerful example of the potential of VR. Already today, uh, about 10% of the experiences in the Oculus Store are education. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to create a dedicated section 
of the Oculus Store for all of the education content and experiences that you guys create. And second, we are going to start a fund, an education fund with $10 million to fund and support developers who are building education content for VR. So this is something that we're, we're really excited about. All right. Now, there is one more kind of software that I'm really excited to talk about today. And that's computer vision software. Because computer vision software can unlock an entirely new category of VR products. Now, one of the hardest problems today in computer vision is called inside-out tracking. Right? The idea is that you have your headset, and you have a couple of cameras on the headset, and you have computer vision software that's looking at the image that the cameras see to determine exactly where you are in a room down to a millimeter or two. And no one has gotten this to reliably work in virtual reality yet. Right? Even Rift, which does track your, your position as you move through space, uh, does it with a method called outside-in tracking, where you know, we put a camera on the desk, and it tracks your, your headset and your hands as you move through space. And that's great, but there's a limit, which is that it only works when you're sitting at your desk or, or at home. So today, there are two primary categories of virtual reality products. Right? There's mobile, uh, like Gear VR, which is great, and it's affordable, it's portable. You could take it anywhere with you that you want. Um, it's not quite as powerful as a PC, uh, and you, know, you, can, you can turn sideways around and look at the world, but without inside-out tracking, you can't actually move through space in it. But it's a great and affordable experience. The second category is PC VR. And that's like Rift, right? And that is the highest quality of virtual reality experience that you can get today. Uh, it's really powerful. It is powered by a, a high-powered computer, which means that it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, and because you're tethered to the computer, uh, you can't really take it with you out into the world. So we believe that there is a sweet spot between these. Right? A, a standalone virtual reality product uh, category that is, that is high quality and that is affordable and that you can bring with you out into the world because it's not tethered to a PC uh, and because it has inside out tracking so it can track uh, your position as you move through the world. So we're working on this now. And it's still early, so I, I don't want to get your hopes up too much. It's, uh, um, <laughs> we, we, we have a demo, but we, we don't have a product yet. Um, but, but this is the kind of thing that we believe will exist uh, when you combine the kind of hardware innovation uh, that we're doing with Oculus and the kind of next generation software experiences and breakthroughs that we're talking about for the next generation of, of, of VR. So you know, we're making progress on this computer vision software that's going to enable this entirely new category of product. And I, I figured, let's, let's take a look at, at where we are in developing this. So, so we have a, we have a, we have a, a prototype that, that, we can, that we can show. Um, so, so that's why we believe that building great software experiences is going to be the key to unlocking the next phase of virtual reality and, and going towards this ultimate goal. Right? We're going to build a software platform that puts people first. We're going to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into all kinds of different content for you to build. Uh, whether it's games or different types of media or education content. And we're going to continue making progress on computer vision until we can unlock this completely new category of virtual reality product. Now, there's a saying in technology that it's often easier to predict what the world is going to be like 20 years from now than it is to predict uh, what the world's going to be like three years from now. Right? And I think we all know in virtual reality what the world's going to be like 20 years from now. It's going to be the next major computing platform. 
so the real question is, what do we need to do over the next three years, or next few years, uh, to help make that possible? And, you know, we believe that the, the key for the next phase is building these great software experiences uh, to unlock all these different things.